Hi, my name is Anna Yurik, and today I'm going to be giving you a quick summary of a recent study that was conducted in conjunction with the 2017 Wildlife Technologies Cohort, which compared the abundance of the yellow-footed antichinus at different levels of ground cover and vegetation height. The yellow-footed antichinus is a small omnivorous marsupial. Other studies have found a relationship between the level of ground cover and small mammal abundance in Australia and that the yellow-footed antichinus prefer structurally complex habitat. It is important to understand the habitat preferences of native wildlife so that such knowledge can be applied by land managers and contribute to conservation efforts. The aim of the current study was to determine whether there is a significant difference in the abundance of the yellow-footed antichinus at different ground cover and vegetation heights. It was hypothesised that medium density ground cover and vegetation height would support the highest abundance of yellow-footed antichinus due to the advantages this provides such as protection from predation and increased feeding and foraging opportunities. This study was carried out in dry sclerophyll forest in South East Queensland in Helladon Hills. There were six properties sampled and each property had a survey team which set 10 transects containing eight Elliot traps per transect. These, these Elliot traps target small mammals and they were baited with these small baits which are made using peanut butter, honey, ham and vanilla essence. Um, each transect was set in a um, habitat relatively homogeneous for ground cover and vegetation height so that these could be assessed against the relative abundance. The blue lines on the graph show the number of antichinus caught per 100 trap nights at different levels of ground cover, figure 1, and vegetation height, figure 2. In the first graph, it seems that there is a clear winner for the number of antichinus caught, being category B at 21-40% to 40 ground cover. However, the 2A ANOVA that was conducted showed statistically insignificant results. The red lines on the graphs show the number of trap lines set for each category, and this was not equal between categories. There seems to be a trend for low to medium density ground cover, however the relationship could not be confirmed due to the lack of repetition and flawed sampling methodology. The results are similar for the assessment of vegetation height and antichinus abundance as seen in the second graph, showing a high abundance of antichinus at a vegetation height of 0 to 20 centimetres. However, again, the p-value was insignificant. A proportionally higher number of traps were set in this vegetation height category, which skewed the results. Although no statistically significant results were obtained from this study, the trends show promise and are likely to prove significant when repeated at a larger scale with more rigorous scientific methodology. Suggested improvements include a clear and standardised assessment of ground cover, equal sampling of each category and sampling in different seasons. Thanks for watching.